<laughs> you got anything good? <laughs> <laughs> Arena Breakout Infinite. I know you keep asking, Harry, is it actually good? Well, let's ask the Tarkov Godfather himself, Hastily. He keeps getting asked the question. Let's Tarkov Godfather. What does he have to say? Thoughts on ABI, Arena Breakout Infinite. Um, it's uh, got really good mechanics. It's got really good FPS and it runs really smoothly. Um, so way better than Tarkov. Done. Done. It's over. Thank you, Pestily. Escape from Shanghai. I mean, Arena Breakout Infinite HBO Max Plus. It may actually be the coveted Tarkov killer. The extraction genre has been labeling every new entry into the genre a Tarkov killer, and then it proceeds to die a violent and brutal death not long after release. Too soon? Too soon? The reason it may actually be the Listen Al Gaib of the extraction genre, aka the Tarkov killer, because it's literally Escape from Tarkov. Bullshit fucking! It probably doesn't help that Battle State games have been shooting themselves in the foot too. Like, you know, like those guys are running an absolute circus over there. However, these developers, financed by Tencent, they just copied the entire game and made a better version of the game with better quality of life and crispier gameplay. Now, before you call me a shill for the CCP, I'll be very transparent about my thoughts on this game. Objectively, it's better than Tarkov, at least in my opinion. Well, it's definitely a similar experience to Tarkov. Is it looking for the WSD keys? Ah! Bullshit cunt. Such a good game and you just get ratted by fucking rat dogs. Now, Harry, some of the Escape from Tarkov stands have said this game is a dumbed down version of Tarkov, but I really don't think it is. Tarkov requiring you to open up a Wikipedia page to understand and learn half the game or have external maps is bad game design. New players having to learn through a YouTuber instead of intuitively inside the game itself, that's just bad game design. It's just lazy. And I feel the reason why the game popped off to begin with is it catered to a very specific niche that wasn't being fulfilled, aka the tactical shooters. I love how the guns feel in this game, man. I stand by it, man. Guns just sound and look cool. Then the the animation just shits the fucking bed. That's hilarious. <laughs> ABI teaches new players and has simple systems in the game to naturally guide players through the experience. Say the ammo, for example. I don't think it's a coincidence that half of the top content creators of Tarkov are ex-military or live stream from the register of a gun store. These guys know guns inside and out and naturally have a disposition to understanding what does what in Tarkov better than the average gamer. In ABI, we have the data in the game, and it's also colored in strength and value. Top armor piercing rounds are going to be colored gold. Done. Simple. I understand the value of my ammunition in the video game. Brilliant. Speaking as someone who isn't a tactical gamer, this quality of life addition to this game really speaks to me. And I do not consider it dumbed down whatsoever. This will also engage new players and make this type of game more approachable to the average gamer. What I like the most about the game is how fluid the movement feels and the gunplay. It either has really good lag compensation or just good use of the Unreal 4 engine which this game is built upon. The developers of Tarkov over the years made Tarkov feel more and more clunky over time. Hollywood mag. You always feel like you've got a piano on your back. I'll show you in real time, Harry, how this game feels. First up, I'm jump scared by your typical extraction game camper. I fortunately have a shotgun and start jump shooting. Take note that the jump shots actually saved my life as the camper spamming me lands all of his shots on my legs and not any vital areas. Yes, a cluster truck of a fight, but jump shooting actually pays off. Now here's some more sweaty gameplay, taking on the entire fucking server. At first I thought it was just one guy fighting an NPC scavenger. It did seem so.
Oh, this guy's just a nudie player, so I just gotta be careful that I don't get cheesed by a shotgun place. Oh, he's fucked. No helmet, it's all over. It's all over, ladies and gentlemen. The crowd goes wild. Bye. Take that, thank you. And that. Then a group rocks up, and I pull off some tricky shit. See him. Oh, I got him headshot! He's gonna think I'm hacking. And because the movement is fairly cleaner in this, I can switch positions easier to catch players off guard while they try and flank me. Fucking idiots. It's now time to get out of this place as quick as I can, Harry, as I'm in the low ground and want to be up on the higher ground so I don't get outplayed. Everyone's rocking up. At this point, I'm slowly running out of rounds for my MP5. I have a backup shotgun. The ammo type is cheap and nasty. It's not going to do enough damage. Another player here, man. It's a full three, man. server. I just ran out of bullets and health. That's all it was. <laughs> That's some Fury Road shit, yeah. Yeah, Harry, it is a bit of a problem. Playing solo is rough and harder than Tarkov. And probably the biggest distinction between the two games is the fact you can queue up with randoms easily and communicate via microphone. Ah, uh, shusha, shusha. Guys, we're playing. Hello? Uh, hello? You lead, you lead. I follow, I follow. Now with a teammate, you go about the map playing in groups as big as four players with no friendly fire and name tags that are visible through walls. Oh, and you can revive teammates if they get knocked by their arms or legs. That's pretty tough on solo play. Now, Harry, I don't think they'll change anything about the way it works going forward. And they can't add more queues because there's already five maps and three queues. Now, quick math, five, 10, 15. There's already 15 queues in the game. If you add another mode with all these maps, it's gonna be like 30 queues. Even if the game was super popular, that's a lot of queues. So I just don't see it happening. But to make the game a little more viable for solo players, instead of just getting chased down like dogs, would be to either remove name tags or add friendly fire. I don't see them adding friendly fire, but removing name tags would probably require a little more communication and accidentally targeting the wrong people without severe punishment, giving solos a little more of a chance to outplay.
Outside of quality of life and the movement and combat being a lot smoother, that's pretty much the main difference between the two games. Otherwise, it's pretty much Chinese Tarkov. Literally, it is. They ripped off Tarkov beat for beat. And I feel weird about it because it's actually really good. However, Harry, I'm more concerned about pay-to-win microtransactions. They say in the interviews that pay-to-win will not be featured in the game, but there's clearly systems set up in place for exactly that. Secret document. Alright. Bang. Bang. Gotcha! The old gotcha mechanics. Pay-to-win. Yep. So, it just... It, 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 see if they follow through with it. I mean, BSG didn't stand by their words with the EOD edition of Tarkov. Why would these developers stick by their words? Exactly. Actions speak louder. So we'll find out, I guess, in time. If the game goes full pay to win on release, I'll pretty much tap out. I vote with my feet. And that's a line I feel very icky about. Because if you give the corporates an inch, they'll take a mile. It wasn't long ago that there would be an outrage if you had gambling loot boxes in a game where you could either get pocket fluff or something of value you spent money on. Now, that's a very normalized thing. So who's to say in 10 years, we're all playing multiplayer games where every single interaction in the game is tied to real life money. F that. Harry, we can't let them manipulate us with the power of language. Instead of pay to win, they manipulate us with saying, it's paying for convenience. Get fucked. They may think you're a dumb chimpanzee, but I'm not falling for it. It's pay to win. Don't be a cuck and support that shit. In the past, there was a prophetic piece of comedy by one of my favorite comedians, George Carlin. He proposed this concept called soft language in the American culture over the decades and used the military institution as an example of how they manipulated the English language to take away the reverence and potency of some of the language around soldiers' trauma throughout war. In the early days, it was called shell shock in the First World War. By the Second World War, it was combat fatigue. And after Vietnam, post-traumatic stress disorder. You now have a disorder and the myriad of syllables to go along with it. You see, a similar behavior is happening in the gaming industry. Pay to win. It is simple. Three syllables. And it's harsh. It involves money. You have to pay to win. But now, guys, you're paying for convenience. We're helping you by taking your money. Hey, I thought I'd just interrupt the video for a second to advertise my own contente. That's the Twitch live stream. We sometimes have a laugh on there and have humorous moments like adding text to speech to the Twitch chat. This mom, open up the basement door now. This train terminates at Epstein Island. I like okay. to creep around <laughs> okay. my- Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, all good things come to an end, but not the stream. The stream's still there, so go give it a follow if you like live streams. Anyway, back to the video. Now, yes, it's a ripoff of Tarkov, but I don't think Battlestate games can do much about tense and ripping off their game. You can't copyright a genre, even if you've made its flagship game. But let's be fucking real. This is literally Chinese Tarkov. I do find it funny when people say the Russian game devs are going to sue the Chinese game devs, though. Both countries known for not enforcing copyright laws. Comrade Putin. Yes, I've done this gag before. Comrade Putin. The Chinese, our neighbors. The people we thought that were our allies, supplying us with golf carts for the front lines. They've stolen our greatest export. Escape from Tarkov. Billion. The game's got the same pitfalls and highs as Tarkov. All over Red Rover. The game's also got the same low skill ceiling cheese of Tarkov, and that'll appeal to the masses because, well, everyone can camp behind a couch with a shotgun.
The game being free to play may bring in a truckload of players, but it'll also be very cost effective for cheaters to play and do real money trade. So yeah, not excited for the cheater apocalypse that's going to hit this game, but Tencent has FU money and maybe put everything they can into anti-cheat to protect their future cash cow. So who bloody knows yet? We just don't know. We'll know on release. But otherwise, this looks like a promising extraction shooter as long as the developers and Tencent don't screw it up somehow. My main concern is designing the game to push players towards pay to win, to even contest in the game. It's already going to have the same quote unquote pay for convenience that Tarkov has, which is getting a special needs edition for the increased stash and container size. My game lags! <laughs> Oh, he fucked up. So you see what I did there? Not to jerk off, right? <laughs> right? He he saw me here, and he knew I was going for the door, and I made the sounds for it, and then I just went straight for the window because he'd be looking at the door. Oh, tell, good at tell, tell her I'm good at games, guys. <laughs> tell her I'm good. <laughs> Battle State Games and Nikita have been losing their absolute shit on social media about ABI, so it's maybe a bit of a sign that they're actually concerned about this game and that it'll steal their thunder. Maybe Tarkov is in trouble. Do you see, see what I did there? That's the thumbnail name. <laughs> you see what I did there? It's like a bit of a throwback to the thumbnail title and all that. You know, trying to be like intellectual and stuff. Uh, all right, uh, cheers for watching. Finger blast all the buttons, you know, all the stuff that the YouTubers say and uh, I guess I'll see you in the next one. And yeah, I'll live stream on Twitch. So go check me out there as well. Yeah,